This is a Canon EOS 800D which weighs 532 grams and costs 999 euros. This is a Canon LP E17 battery pack which weighs 43 grams and costs 67 euros. That means that the technology which goes into making this battery costs 84% per weight of the amount of technology which goes into making this whole camera and I intend to find out why. So we'll just put these to the side for the time being and have a look at the rest of the things. So I have uh, gone to eBay and purchased a whole bunch of uh, cheaper accessories for this thing. Uh, so we've got uh, four enumerated batteries, like so, of various price grades. Uh, the Blue Max cost about 20 euros. Uh, as did uh, this one, which is a Mitsuru brand. And uh, these two, along with this charger, cost about as much as one of these batteries. And in total, they cost about as much as this one original Canon battery. So, I have developed a bit of a test strategy for figuring out uh, what exactly these guys can do and if a Canon is indeed worthy of a price asked. So, uh, I'm going to be measuring some stuff. I'm going to me be measuring the power consumption of a camera at uh, different uh, stages of operation and then we're going to be testing the battery uh, at the uh, current uh, which the camera draws during use. I, this is mostly an issue when you're recording videos since that just drains your battery and you can't use a battery grip on this thing. Uh, but we're also going to be measuring the ESR and we're going to test if they've got any protection and what the cutoff voltage is in such a case. Uh, and in order to do that, I have created a gizmo. This is the adapter from a cheapo charger, which I have coupled a couple of test points to, as well as some banana plugs. So this nicely fits any of these batteries, Canon original or not, and these can be connected to my test load and my bench power supply for charging, as well as my test resistive load uh, for testing the ESR when we switch between different loads. So I've got a whole bunch of data to collect. Let's just get to work. So before we start to get into the batteries, we need to establish a baseline for the power consumption of a camera. And for that, I have purchased this really cheap uh, AC E18 uh, camera AC adapter for this uh, camera. So uh, I've just wired this up to my cheaper power supply. And uh, let's see how much power, or rather how much current this camera draws. So they are using uh, two series, say the lithium batteries, by the way, uh, 8 volts is correct. They're not 3.7 volt batteries. Don't worry, I'm not going to fry this. He said that's the smoke came out. 60 milliamp draw, geez. Why is this camera drawing 60 milliamps since, well, powered off? That's insane. Probably just does that for pirate batteries, I'd wager. Anyway, let's turn it on. So it's going to give us an egg screen, yeah, yeah. So there we go, we've got the camera in standby, it's drawing 180 milliamps. 180. And uh, let, let's do live view as well. That puts it at 380 milliamps. So we'll flip it into video mode and during recording at uh, 1080p 25 frames per second it's drawing I'm gonna call that uh, 420 milliamps so we'll finish that off and uh, we'll just uh, put it into time-lapse mode because that's another very battery draining exercise we'll put at the fastest possible speed there we go and start time-lapse capture and that's drawing considerably more than I would have thought with the display off so that's, uh, we'll average that to 350 milliamps. That's a surprisingly high draw. But that's it. We have got our baseline for 
the power consumption of a camera. So, now we know how to test these batteries. And just out of curiosity, I tested a bunch of different uh, settings, so you can pause the video and check that out if you're curious. And here's the device that's going to be doing the capacity testing. It's a very home-built uh, data logging a constant current uh, sink, which uh, just uh, keeps drawing a set amount of current uh, until a threshold voltage is reached. And here you can see it in action. It's uh, not the most accurate thing in the world of these uh, low currents, but uh, it's going to be good enough for gauging, you know, within uh, a few tens of milliamp hours, it's going to be just fine. So I prog programmed it to turn off at uh, 6 volts when I'd say the 2 cell lithium battery is uh, quite thoroughly depleted. Uh, we're going to see if uh, the protection circuit cuts before that or if uh, the battery is uh, actually able to perform down to 6 volts. But uh, if we turn the voltage down slowly, you can see the current remains constant and once we pass 6 volts, the load stops drawing anything at all beyond the standby of the device being powered. And when we're done, we can just uh, connect up to the load and extract a nice discharge graph like this. And here you can see where I turned the voltage down over the course of about uh, four seconds until it turned off and terminated the work. So that's about it. Time to gather some data. Well, there's the setup. So we'll start by just putting the Jesus battery in there. Wait for the tester to boot and press the go button. And in a couple of hours, we're going to have the results. Uh, there we have the results for the Canon original battery and uh, coming in at 1.02 amperes uh, for its specified 1.04. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, see that uh, the 6 volt cutoff I chose is so close to the uh, specification for which Canon has designed the battery so that's an excellent uh, confirmation of our test methodology and uh, we're, we can be quite confident in uh, the testing for the other's batteries uh, being comparable to the spec Canon used to specify their own battery. Sweet! And just for good measure here's the discharge curve as rendered by the test software so you can see it starts off at uh, just about uh, 8.4 volts and pretty much straight away drops down to 8 and it's very very linear down to what's that about 7 volts at which point it starts to roll off rather steeply at the knee and until it finally dies at 6 volts there. Since we do get this knee we can be sure that we actually are uh, very close to the end of a battery's uh, useful capacity because it, this would just start dropping off steeper as we reach the point where there's just nothing left in the battery and finally the protection circuit would just cut us out completely. So the results are in and we really aren't seeing anything particularly surprising. So explain the chart, we've obviously got the capacity for each battery, the ESR I've measured and the cutoff voltage of the protection circuit. If it was below 6 volts I just wrote less than 6 volts because the battery is empty anyway. Uh, the ESR tests are just the values I got when I did three different tests uh, on them. I connected the batteries up to my uh, 4 or 8 ohm test load and went from 8 ohms which is a lower current to 4 ohms which is a higher current measured the voltage drop across the cell and uh, wrote that down here and from that you can calculate the internal resistance uh, which is what we've got here uh, so go going from the top the canon original battery is obviously the best one in every single a sense of a word followed by the Blue Max, uh, the Mitsuru, and Generic 1 and Generic 2, which was entirely broken. I've still on the protection circuit out of it for a different project. Uh, so, real the only battery that's actually good out of the uh, pirate ones is the uh, Blue Max. Uh, it clocked in at 0.91 amp hours, which is pretty close to the uh, original Canon battery and uh, 160 milliamps of internal resistance, which is uh, absolutely fine. Uh, granted, the internal resistance is fine on all of these, really, uh, save for the final generic one, which was broken. Uh, the importance of the internal resistance 
is that uh, if you have a battery with too high uh, internal resistance, ESR, uh, the camera is not going to be able to draw uh, high current pulses out of it. Uh, for instance, when charging the flash in rapid fire succession, uh, you're, you're going to run into issues where the battery voltage just uh, sags down because it's not able to deliver the current and the camera might go unstable, uh, it might reboot, it uh, might even get damaged in case it doesn't have a very good uh, pay supply protection built into it, so you really want as low an ESR as possible. Uh, however, with uh, 150-ish millions being the standard set by the original battery, I'd say all of these batteries which actually worked performed just fine. Uh, anything starting to get closer to 300 milliohms or so, I would perhaps start to considering to be an issue. Uh, so, moving on, the Mitsuru came in, came in at a happy uh, second place, uh, very low capacity, uh, decent protection circuit, decent internal resistance, uh, followed by the generic uh, number one and the generic number two, which would just didn't work right. And so, why this fourth one didn't work right is uh, an issue which is rather unique to these uh, two cell uh, camera batteries when compared to other camera batteries, because usually devices like this run on a single lithium cell. So you've just got a 3.7 volt battery. That's not the case with uh, at least Canon DSLRs because you've got a two cell battery, as you can see there. There are two cells in series. And what's happened with this one is one of the cells was charged out of the factory, the other one was not. So when that happens, the protection circuit is going to notice that one of the cells is running very low and when that one's empty, it's just going to cut the entire battery out, leaving you with a pretty much useless battery. You only get the capacity that's, well, charged into the less charged cell and there's really nothing you can do about it except to take it apart and manually charge the cells one at a time. But normal user is not going to do that for a $5 battery anyway. So, a risk worth considering. The protection circuit in this one, however, did do its job, cut out. Uh, I didn't want to know what the actual ESR of this thing was, I couldn't measure it. Uh, it was just so bad. <laughs> so the camera was probably not too happy operating on this cell if I had put it in there. So, good thing I found that out. And beyond that, really nothing much to say except for the general <sighs> Disclaimer about uh, these uh, Chinese batteries, uh, even though the Blue Max came out on top in my test, there's no telling uh, what a Blue Max you buy is going to perform like. Uh, it could be that you get a generic battery that's better than this Blue Max. It could be that you get a Mitsuru that's uh, better than the Blue Max, and you could end up with a Blue Max that's just not even working. Uh, the thing about cheap eBay batteries and cheap eBay things in general is there's no uh, repeatability. You never know what you get. So you really have to use caution and test everything for yourself as much as possible. But yeah, that's something. Canon original battery came out on top. Not worth $67 though. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.